Uh, I'm really honored to be here with you all this evening, and it allows me to honor my father, who was a judge in Berlin, and also, of course, my mother when they came here in 1937. Um, one of the things that I did last night, until probably way too late into the night, was to take out some boxes that I've sort of been afraid to look at since my mother passed away that had in it really remarkable documents. I knew they were there, I had seen them before, but um, when I stopped looking at them at about three in the morning, um, obviously couldn't go to sleep. They date back to um, the 17, 1800s family documents, but they also have some pretty amazing documents that um, detail what was going on in the 1930s. And um, things like, and I do have with me the passports my father had, for example. Um, one stopped in 1933, the next one started in 1933, and they look remarkably different. There is a pretty dominant swastika on the second one. And uh, I have documents that um, essentially were his application to come to the United States. And I have a lot of commentary from my mother. My mother wrote out a lot of things before she was interviewed for Shoah. And uh, among the things that she said were, you know, the Americans weren't so great either, even though I love my adopted country. Uh, so many more people might have been saved if some of the immigration policies had been a little different, a theme we've all heard fairly recently. So this has been going on for centuries, probably. Um, I'm a federal judge at the Court of Federal Claims here in, in Washington. And you heard a little bit about my background. And I'm here really as a testimony to the fact that the United States is a land of opportunity. My parents came with a great deal of education, spoke many languages, each of them including English when they came, but zero dollars. I grew up in a one bedroom apartment. I had no idea um, that I had an unprivileged upbringing because I really had a very privileged upbringing. I slept in the living room, but that was the least of it. We couldn't take the bus up the hill because it was five cents. Um, we had, you know, meals and repeated and repeated, but it was a very privileged uh, upbringing. But if you think about the fact of where I came from um, and that I was the deputy solicitor and acting solicitor with the Department of Interior, now a federal judge, um, fairly amazing. My father studied in Heidelberg and in Jena. And he um, was chosen and chose to take the judicial path. He had just finished his apprenticeship years and had just been appointed to the bench uh, when he was thrown out of federal government in 1933. Uh, at the time, he could no longer practice law. He lived in Berlin and fortunately had some income from uh, parental uh, property that had been left to him and uh, an opportunity to uh, basically take care of those properties and to uh, have a, a, an income. Um, <clears throat> but in a sense, he was one of the lucky ones because when he was disbarred, essentially, in 1933, he started looking around with my mother to various places to go, and they looked at Holland, Belgium, Spain, and the United States was kind of the last place. Now, he was pretty lucky he didn't end up in any of those. Um, it was a lot of circumstance that allowed him to not choose those places, such as a pig in the reservoir in Madrid uh, with polluted water and various things that sort of made them decide that that wasn't where they wanted to go. <clears throat> but I will say this, from the time that I had my first job out of law school as a prosecutor in New York, um, I realized how unfortunate it was that my dad had not been able to go back to law school. His legal instincts were far better than mine will ever be, and I used to describe my cases to him, and he'd say, well, you know, what about that? And he really did not have a background in American law, but his legal mind was superb. Now, what he did do is, while he worked, he was able to study for the CPA exam. He became a uh, CPA. He passed the CPA exam. Remember, English, he did know some, but it was not his first language, but he passed it in one try. Now, we know many American CPA uh, applicants who do not pass it in one try. So clearly, again, he, he was somewhat, you know, it was unfortunate. His intelligence, his abilities, they were a little bit wasted. But he got a job as a CPA and then lost that job when the American soldiers returned. And of course, they had to be given their jobs back. So he was back to square one. 
He opened a small CPA practice, which really never materialized into much. When he passed away, I went through various documents to probate his estate, and I saw his old tax returns. And frankly, the fact that I never understood that we were poor as I was growing up is remarkable, because his income was ridiculously low. Um, <clears throat> so they were able to make it work. Um, I can't say that I ever planned to be a judge. I don't think I did. Um, it was certainly in the back of my mind, but I used to laugh at my father, who was pretty old-fashioned in some ways and very German. Grew up in a very German household. Um, we were just joking earlier with somebody that uh, I am incapable of being late. It makes me crazy. Um, <laughs> so uh, my husband, on the other hand, has a little less of a problem with it, which makes us both crazy. But um, you know, we. I, I was at dinner every night. I'm an only child, as many of this German refugee generation had only one child because of the economics. And um, I grew up in a house where dinner was precisely at 6.45, and I mean precisely. Um, but we would talk politics every night. We would listen to the radio and talk about current events. And I, my father, who probably thought I should and articulated that he thought I should raise children and maybe be a teacher, and I do have a teaching license, but it just didn't work out for me. Uh, I was bored to tears and couldn't deal with some of the disciplinary issues. Um, but um, he, you know, he trained me to think and want to do something like be a lawyer. Uh, he, he used to talk about legal issues. So when I was first asked by the White House uh, whether I was interested in becoming a judge, um, I told my parents about it, and my father, who was, you know, very stood up straight, had a tie on at dinner until he was in his 80s, um, basically cried. This was a full circle coming to bear, and uh, I'm getting a little choked up myself. Um, when I was sworn in by Justice Senator Day O'Connor for my first and ultimately my second swearing in, and I, he was not alive for the second one, but for the first one, a tribute to how wonderful the woman this Justice O'Connor is. She heard the story, and we were talking about it, and I told her the story. We were up at the Supreme Court in her chambers, and she was giving us a tour of the Supreme Court in the private areas, and she turned to my father and called him judge. Pretty spectacular. I had a second swearing in that day at the court, and my chief judge, who's a dear friend and has been for many years, um, gave my father a robe and put him on the bench while I was sworn in. It uh, was pretty special. It made everybody feel good. Um, I have definitely been blessed by parents who got to see their three grandchildren grow up, their seven grandchildren they did not meet, but here they are. They're a tribute to survival, obviously. They gave me a phenomenal private school education on scholarship, a remarkable college education at Columbia, a remarkable law school and education at Fordham. And, um, you know, I really consider myself to have been uh, very lucky. They took me back to their homes in Berlin, in Germany, right after I graduated from law school, very proudly showed me everything that they had seen. And, um, you know, the real issue for me is how do I preserve this for my children, for my grandchildren, and I don't know whether I'm going to dump all those boxes that I found last night on my daughters and say, take care of these, or whether I will show it to them, make copies, and perhaps donate it to the Holocaust Museum, which I was highly involved in, because I was the Solicitor of Interior when the museum was constituted, and I did the land deals and the early certifications, and then got my husband appointed to um, the Executive Committee and the Content Committee of the Holocaust Museum when I left the uh, to go to the bench because I couldn't take a, any kind of a position in the executive branch. So <clears throat> in many ways, this is another one of those wonderful moments, and I thank you, Bill, for asking me to be part of this, uh, that is a fulfillment of a growing up that was pretty special and uh, a full circle for me now as a federal judge. Thank you so much.